Well, welcome everyone to our weekly chapel service for Sunday, November the 22nd, the year 2020. Uh, from those of us who follow the liturgical yearly calendar, this is the last Sunday of the uh, calendar, and it is Christ the King Sunday. Next Sunday begins Advent and our Advent Christmas season. So please join with me in our call to worship from Psalm 95. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord, shouting loudly to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and praise, with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. His hand holds everything from the lowest spot on earth to the mountain peaks. He made the mighty depths of the sea, and his hands formed the dry land. Come, let us bow down and worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. Our opening hymn is O Worship the King, All Glorious Above. And once again, we're enjoying the music from the Grace Community Church in Sun Valley, California. Let us pray together. O Lord, the God of power and might, your Son shows us the way of service, and in him we inherit the riches of your grace. Give us the wisdom to know what is right and the strength to serve the world you have made. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our scripture reading continues, and this is the last Sunday of Jesus's words from the Gospel of Matthew about the coming kingdom and about being prepared for the kingdom. 
Sometimes in his discourses, he has been speaking to the religious leaders, answering questions that they have posed to him, um, challenging them to pay attention to the meaning of uh, the words of Scripture and not just the letter of the law, and then also speaking to the people to show them a way that is different than the way that they have understood from the um, religious leaders. So here is Matthew 25, verses 31 through 46. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate the people from one another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance. The kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go visit you? The king will reply. Truly, I tell you, whatever you did for the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, depart from me. For you are cursed into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and didn't help you? He will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I must say I um, found it interesting to read in several commentaries and also Frankly, on Facebook this week, when pastors in this pastor group that I occasionally look at say, where is the grace in this? Where is the mercy and kindness of God? And yet, this scripture reminds us that we do have to be accountable. One of the challenges of the Christian New Testament and of Paul and the followers and of us today and everyone in between has been the law that is very clear in the Old Testament and the gospel of the grace of God that comes through so much through Jesus. Um, even in the Old Testament, um, we do see clearly that struggle between the law and the inability of people to keep the law at least over long periods of times, to the degree to which one would say one was a right person. It is a challenge to do that. And then Jesus, when he was asked, what is the, what is the sum or the greatest of the laws, said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and strength and love your neighbor as yourself. He didn't say that you had to perform and reach certain categories of perfection. 
he talked about one's relationship with God and one's relationship with one another. The reading here today is about human relationships and human compassion and how Jesus is saying that when we are judged, it is by the quality, it is by the willingness to show that compassion to one another. And that showing compassion and in just concrete ways is like doing so for our Lord himself. Now, I'm not going to try to judge how, who's going to, who, who shows this and is going to get their reward and who does not. I think that's part of a relationship. In the relationship in human terms is often a relationship of how well we trust people and how well they will judge or treat or interact with us in relation to how we do so with them. And that seems to me to be a big part of the scripture reading. The Apostle Paul, who wrote so much of the New Testament, struggled as a Pharisee and a teacher who was trained so much in the law um, and was very aware of how he fell short of the law. To know that the law does not, or not the law itself, but our attempts to be perfect, our attempts to accomplish, our attempts to be the best performers of the law um, uh, are, I mean, the law is a goal, but it is not something we can completely fulfill in this life. And yet, it's God's grace because he loves and cares for us, that means that we don't have to be perfect or perfectionists in following the law. I think that is, it is a fine line and is a difficult, and, and perhaps we all have to find that in our own way. Uh, but I'm sharing with you at least the way that makes sense to me. Um, it seems to me that Jesus is saying that if you love the Lord your God with all of yourself, and if you love your neighbor as yourself in the same way, then the fruit, the example, the uh, it will be obvious in the fact that you see hungry and you feed them, and thirsty and you give them something to drink, and you care about the people. Now, Jesus is not saying that Every time you see a hungry person, you feed them. Every time you do that, he's not setting up, I don't think, a performance-based criteria. Or in the words, or at least the life of Paul, in a perfectionist way. He's just saying, when you see hungry, you, did you see someone hungry and did you help them? Did you see someone in need? Did you show compassion? Did your life show evidence of that? If so, then you also did so to me. And if you don't live a life like that, then you really don't have a relationship with God in um, any way or fashion that um, shows that you love God and love your neighbor as yourself. It is such a tendency of me, and maybe you, and I think of human beings in general, to try to find uh, the standard that we're supposed to meet. How many times do I do this? How much do I do this? Jesus is not talking about how whether we go to church or whether we are able to quote the Luther Confession or whether we are able to recite the Ten Commandments, he's talking about the quality of how we live with one another, and that that says a lot about our faithfulness. I am sure that this was heard by all of the people, and I'm sure that this was also heard by the religious leaders because um, he is... 
uh, at least by all accounts of what we know, they were very much about certain standards of religious behavior that gave you the example of being righteous. And many of those standards helped support their lifestyle. Jesus was about the people and about what their needs were. And so he's contrasting this. We are accountable for how we live. I'm not going to try to say exactly what the standard is because I don't think there is a human performance level that this is about. I think this is about what is in our heart, what is our willingness, what is our compassion as just human beings and how we live our lives. I risk saying that Jesus sometimes indulges in hyperbole to make his point. And yet I also know that there is judgment and that there are consequences to our actions and that there is possibility of forgiveness and, and restoration and God is about all of those things. But here he is reminding us Love the Lord your God, and part of how we know that you love the Lord your God with all yourself is how you love and treat your neighbors. That's the message of today. So when did we see you hungry, God? Well, look in the eyes of some people around. When did we see you in need? We may not be able to take care of everyone we meet or everyone we see, but we can at least have compassion and do the best to our ability. Amen. And now let us pray together. Oh Lord, we do thank you that you love and care for us. And we thank you that you hold us accountable, even though we fall short of uh, some of the standards that we think we should make. Lord, I pray that you touch the lives of each of us who are part of this um, uh, congregation, this virtual congregation. Help us to know your love. Help us to know that um, uh, you love one another and help us to reach out to one another. Lord, as we seek to realize your kingdom in our lives and in the world around us, grant us opportunities to show compassion and give us the, um, the caring and willingness to respond to those opportunities. Lord, help us during this time of COVID that seems to be going on and on and right now seems to be getting worse. Lord, help us to care enough about ourselves and our neighbors to be careful and to watch out for one another and to do things that are uncomfortable or sacrifice because they will help us through this. Lord, we care enough about one another to do so. Lord, I pray that you... Uh, Continue to guide those who are going to bring a vaccine or several vaccines into our lives and help protect us in the next months and year. But Lord, we also pray that you be with those who are suffering, those who are ill, those who are dying. Lord, give them a sense of your presence and give them relief and a peace that goes in this world in their lives now and goes on to the next so that they may have eternal life. Lord, we pray that you watch over our leaders in our community, our state, our nation, around the world, for leaders are often given such great responsibilities, and we pray that you will guide them in serving everyone well. Lord, help us to follow the example that you gave to us in how you lived, how you cared for one another, and how you were a healing presence in the lives of so many. We thank you for your sacrifice, and we pray together the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our closing song is one that we traditionally sing around the time of Thanksgiving. Um, it is meaningful all the time. The words were written by Martin Rinkert in the year of 1636. That's a while back. And then translated later, and we sing them, of course, in English. Um, the uh, music is traditional with this, um, with this song, and we are again being graced by the Grace Community Church in Sun Valley, California. Now thank we all our God. Here we go. Now thank we all our God with heart and hand and voices who wondrous things has done in whom this world rejoices who from our mother's arms has blessed us on our way with countless gifts of love and still is ours today. Oh, may this bounteous God through all our life be in his grace and guide us when perplexed and free us from all ills in this world and the next. All praise and thanks to And so as you leave and we go to this week and we look forward to Thanksgiving and all that's before us, remember to be strong in the Lord, no matter what may come your way. For neither death nor life nor anything in all of creation will be able to separate you from the love of God. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. God bless you. Have a happy Thanksgiving. And may we meet again soon. Amen.